Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Jen and today we're discussing my experience after buying the P1S 60 days ago and 900 print hours later. The last time we discussed my experience, I had her for about four days and I was ready to return that beast. Since we've decided to keep it, there have been some new realizations, some things that we've learned and realized that we would like to discuss with you guys. Before getting into this video, I do want to share that I am not sponsored by Bamboo or anyone for that matter. These are all my personal experiences as someone who jumped into this back in November of 2020. This is not going to be a video where I showcase how good of an editor I am and this is also not going to be a video where I rehash what is in the owner's manual and tell you how fast the printing speed is. This is just my experience as how it performs throwing everything we could at her. We've done it all in Miss Wahlberg, that is my P1S, and I'm going to discuss with you the good and the bad that came along with it and a couple things that I've realized and maybe who it should be for. So without further ado, let's just jump right into today's video. So a quick recap we did buy Miss Wahlberg about 60 days ago and in the first four days I was ready to return her. We were getting a lot of fails, a lot of problems, everything was not quite working after seeing so many people discuss how wonderful they loved or how wonderful the P1S was. I was really disappointed because the price tag was just kind of questionable in my opinion about was it really worth it because my a series that have over 2000 hours are still going strong so if you did miss that video though i'm not going to recap it i'm just going to put it in the description below you can watch it after this one let's go ahead and discuss what we've been printing this last 60 days so we've been doing a lot of different projects on the p1s specifically larger projects like a big skull we did a giant horse we've done giant dragons we've done a lot of great things in there hue forges and they've all been great. But the initial purchase was for custom pieces, custom jobs that I just didn't have a lot of faith on the A-Series. And I'm gonna show you the before and after of those specific jobs to show you just how much of a difference the P1S made versus the A-Series on the same model. So let's go ahead and dive right into what was great about the P1S. First of all, the speed. It is noticeably faster. Now I'm not gonna give you any nerdy tests to show and prove my opinion on this, but as someone who has been pumping multiple models weekly, constantly, different filaments, all types of sizes and shapes and modelers and brands, there has been no stone unturned in the PLA world on my machines. It is noticeably faster by a few hours on some models. So that was a huge win for us because you know me, time equals money. And it's not just the speed that we noticed. Right off the bat, the quality is there. Now you could probably get a better nozzle, tweak your slicing settings on the A series. Let me just show you the crafts that we did on the A series versus the crafts that we did on the P1S. Now, as you can see, this first model that we did here had so many just rough lines around that little bottom bulbous area that you see underneath the mouth and it wasn't clean looking and it really bothered me and that was the first custom order that we got and so we decided at that moment we need a better machine to handle a project like this now you can see there is text on this side that text does have a little bit of bleed there it's a little bit bumpy but you could probably fix that with a skinnier nozzle now what we did when we got the p1s in we didn't change anything we put the same exact model and the same file in there we did use a different filament only because she requested this next batch in rainbow versus white and look at the difference look at the smoothness underneath the mouth on this wiggly worm <laughs> and you'll see that yes the p1s outshined the a1 by a long shot on top of being quicker. So I do want to say that if you are doing something that has added custom text, especially on a bulbous area, I mean, it is it is very unique. Not everyone's going to be needing to do this type of project, but the P1S is going to be able to handle it for you much better than the A was able to. So just keep that in mind. Real quick, I'm just going to throw in there another pro for me is the aesthetics. I just think she's slick. She looks better. I did have to print a little riser for my AMS sit unit to sit on top. We were having issues in the beginning because of the heat inside with the PLA. So that's why we got this riser printed out. But she just looks really good to me. There's no tubes hanging everywhere. It doesn't look as much of an eyesore as the A series. I just don't think the A series are just that good looking. They're just kind of ugly to me. But 
I hope they're not bad. I said that. But the P1S just looks good to me. You know, I am a PC fan and custom building computers was something we used to do back in the day. So it just kind of reminds me of those days and I just like that look. So I'm going to have to just say that is a plus for me. It just looks better. The next pro I'm going to have to talk about is the maintenance. It is they kind of like not existent for us. So on the A series, we get messaged all the time. So now I know that the P1S is an older model. So I don't know if it's because the A series are newer that they included that. Maybe you guys can comment below and let me know. I am always being told to oil up my A series and I really don't have any maintenance at all with the P1S. Now, knock on wood, I know that if there was an issue with my AMS that could be frustrating compared to the AMS Lite. However, we haven't had any problems. I would have to say that maintenance is just easier on the P1S than on the A-Series because there are more moving parts on the A-Series, in my opinion. I feel like there's just more work to be done to make sure it works, you know? So I feel like the P1S is just out of the box, a more of a workhorse than the A-Series, which is gonna help me segue into my next pro, which is very beginner friendly. Maybe at first it could look a little intimidating, but after you get used to it, it's actually very easy to work with. She is built to work for you 24 seven. She is not something that I see breaking down anytime soon. And if I'm being honest, I think that the P1S will outlast any of my A-series. I haven't been in this hobby long enough to really know though. So if you guys have been in the bamboo realm much longer than me and you and you know for a fact that's, that's either correct or incorrect, please let us know down below. I'd like to know what to expect. But my suspicion is that the P1S is gonna outlast the, the A-series by a long shot. But We'll see, we'll see what happens. And the last pro I'm gonna discuss is that it's just reliable. I don't go to sleep thinking, oh my God, I wonder what's gonna happen in the morning. Where with the A series, there is so much that can kind of go wrong. Just even the smallest layer shift from that bed slinging is so much more likely to happen than on the Core XY. It just is. When I go to bed at night, I feel very safe and cozy knowing I'm gonna wake up to a beautiful pro project being done in the morning. Where the A series, I'm always like, okay, let's see what happens. It doesn't happen too often anymore. We have been learning so much to where we can avoid major problems that we were getting a lot in the beginning, you know? Uh, but to be honest, the P1S just feels reliable. I, I find myself wanting to do certain projects on the P1S more often than the A, even if I have made it on my A's before. I just feel better knowing it's gonna be made in the P1S. And I only have one, so it makes it difficult. I'm like, oh my God, do I need another one? help me. So let's go ahead and talk about the cons on this machine though. There are two particular cons, just two, that I have to discuss. And the first one is going to be the AMS system. Hands down, y'all, it is, it sounds like there is a Terminator robot like running around in the house when that door is open. At least that's what Luis described it as. How does it sound? Like a robot, like the Terminator. <laughs> so the AMS is loud. It's wonky when you start using, when the spoolies get too light, it gets wonky. It doesn't like it. When you're using cardboard, it's gonna mess your, sh it's gonna mess your stuff up. You know, it's just not as forgiving as the AMS light is. And if there is a maintenance issue, I know it's gonna be more difficult than the AMS light. So that is the only con with it. It's just, mm, it's just not my favorite AMS system. Um, you have to manually enter everything in on the computer. Um, well, unless you have the Panda Eye Touch, then you don't. But unlike on the A series where you can put the filament in right there, um, it's, I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but it's just, you know, loud, obnoxious, and a little wonky. The second gripe I would say is that the poop shoot is just not functional. It's not built or designed for creators who want to flush a lot of waste. If you're doing a, a project that you just have to make sure there is absolutely no bleed, then that poop shoot can get stuck. There's like a little flap in there, which why is that there, you guys? Why is that flap there? Can we just take it out? What is the point of that? I don't know. But it caused so many issues when I first bought the P1S. If your chamber is closed and it just, the, the filament gets too gooey in that poop chute, it will stick to the walls and it will harden there and then you've got a big blob clog 
going on anyways it's just not ideal it's just not the most up to date i feel i feel like the chamber inside next to the the plate should have been bigger but you know what do i know so i just think that the poop shoot could have been a little bit better but i mean still is that a deal breaker Probably not. I did just realize in my notes that Luis himself has his own gripe. He is a computer nerd through and throughout. And his biggest gripe was that there's no easy way to just take off the door. You have to kind of take it apart to take the door off. Let me know if you guys have had any issues with that. We kind of want to take the door off, but we're not sure yet. But he just wishes you could just pop it on and off depending on the print that you're going to be using. But that's just one of his little gripes. I, on the other hand, prefer the door closed. I think that it is incredible incredibly louder without the door with the door open so I just prefer the door closed so I don't know I guess we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on that one Louise so who would this printer be for I know that since the tariffs came all of the prices have gone up is it still worth buying in my opinion of course it is but is it really what you need that's the question if you are doing this for a hobby to hustle, you want to beat it into the ground, give it all that it can, and you want something that's reliable, fast, and is gonna give you the results that you need because you're doing this for a business, I would say yes, definitely worth the investment. If you are doing this because you are just a side hustle, small hobbyist, even if you're just doing small craft shows, maybe once or twice a month, I would say the A series is going to get you far. I would stick with the A series, especially if there is a budget issue here. There is a huge difference in price, I believe, between the A series and the P1S. So unless you are looking to do other filaments besides PLA, or you're looking to do like really custom work with text and bulbous things, things that have a lot of like really skinny tall parts, like, you know, tall objects, like I explained that we did earlier, then yeah, get the P1S, hands down. But if you are not doing any of those things and you are not trying to make this a like full on business, get an A. They are workhorses too. They are awesome. We love them. We have four for a reason. We are printing with them 24 seven. They have over 2000 hours. So you can't go wrong with any of the bamboo, to be honest. Am I a bamboo fangirl? No, I'm actually looking for another printer that is just as reliable as the P1S and perhaps maybe has a bigger bed. I would like a bigger bed. It's not a deal breaker, but I also would like it to be a little bit cheaper. So if you guys know more about brands that are not in the bamboo realm that are on par with maybe an X1C or a P1S, drop them down below and let me know what to go look at. I know you guys have told me in the past, but your girl is busy, retell me, okay? I wanna go back and see what's out there. I know the H2D just dropped. I know some other printers are on the way, most likely, I want to see what we could possibly obtain that would complement this. Now, if I have to get an, another bamboo, I'm not gonna be sad about it. I just might wait until all the dust settles before I jump in because I know the tariffs cause a little bit of a ruckus. I don't know what's really going on. I'm not in that realm too much. I'm very much focused on my shop and YouTube right now. So what's been going on in the realm of politics and things like of that nature, I'm a little bit still under a rock because I haven't been reading anything. I haven't been in it and uh, I know a lot's been going on. So feel free to catch me up in the comments. I'll let your girl know, let other people know what it is that you know. And I would love to read and comment back. As you guys know, I'm always pushing the limits to these printers. I am trying to print with all kinds of colors all the time. So a dual extruder on the H2D or the Prusa XL, those definitely have my interest. The price tags don't. <laughs> so I'm waiting. I'm not sure I'm going to jump in yet. We're still doing pretty good with our five printers. Five and a half if you count Mr. Geetech over there. He's got about a 30% success rate. So um, I don't think I'll get another one of those, but I am shopping for a new printer. So please let me know what you guys recommend. Now, if you found this video helpful, please feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I am gonna be announcing something really exciting very soon to help you guys either build up your businesses, grow your YouTubes, or learn how to do all the tips and tricks that we've been doing with our 3D printing. All of that will be in a new community that I am building right now on the back end. Comment down below if you're interested. I am, and it'll put a little hustle in my, in for me to keep, to get it out quicker if I hear 
from you guys that it is something that you want. So thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate all of you guys. I'm so excited to talk to you guys, learn from you guys, watch your videos. It's been such a wild ride. It is such a great time to be alive. Don't let any of the people out there with the nay with the naysayers and the hate and just the Debbie Downers just freaking ignore them. Kick them kick them to the curb, boot them, delete them. Don't give in to that energy. You know what I'm saying? We're all here to create, don't hate. So uh, with that being said, I will see you guys in my next vlog and uh, happy printing everyone. Bye for now. Mike, Jack one, two. What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Jen and this is Hamill's House of 3D Prints where we are sharing what we do weekly. Blah, blah, blah. And, and add about, oh, Hip Tourette's. <laughs> We're starting over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jeez. What's up, everybody? <laughs> uh, what's up, everybody? <laughs> what is wrong with me? Clearly everything. Okay. <clears throat>